everyone, it's Paige. Welcome back to my channel. So, oh boy, I literally have notes for this video. I don't take notes in case you couldn't tell from my other videos, so this is gonna be interesting. But I needed them because today we are going to be talking about the new Twilight book, aka Midnight Sun. So this video might come as a bit of a surprise to you if you are kind of not new to my channel. I don't really do like individual book reviews um, and I certainly don't talk about Twilight like an awful lot. That's kind of a, a lie, like a lie of admission because Twilight was a huge part of my life and when this was um, officially announced to be released, I internally like split into two parts. So it was like the part of me that was normal and then the part of me that was still like 11 years old. I have loved Twilight for quite a long time. In fact, I will insert a few pictures here of my 11th birthday party, which was themed after Twilight. That was in 2009 when, you know, I was turning 11. Midnight Sun, the draft of it, I believe, was posted in 2008. I was literally like waiting for releases. I was wearing Twilight gear. I was doing all of the above, everything that is associated with the Twilight fandom. I absolutely did it. And I always hoped that she would finish the Midnight Sun draft because at the time, obviously like Edward was the guy for me. Of course, when this was officially announced, you know, that she was going to finish the draft and literally publish it, I was kind of shocked. Like, I never expected her to finish it. Of course, she was also worried that the fandom was no longer interested in Midnight Sun, and I feel like such a cheese ball. but I'm literally like Bella in that situation talking to Edward, like, I will always want you, like, this was always anticipated for me so of course the second that i heard that it was coming out it was on my tbr and i actually bought this the day it came out and i started reading it that day i finished this at the beginning of the week and then i reread all of twilight if you've already read twilight then there shouldn't really be any spoilers in this video it's just gonna be more so like things you can anticipate if you haven't read this book yet but you have read Twilight. So being that this is from the perspective of a 17 year old vampire, there is a lot of internal dialogue that is mostly just about his own self-hatred. Um, there's a lot of like, you know, deliberating on right and wrong and a little bit of obsessiveness or a lot of obsessiveness. And then it's it's certainly just very angsty. So keep that in mind as you um, pick this up to read it. It's also very long. I actually can't tell you if how much longer this is from like the original Twilight, but it certainly felt very long. I think because of all that angsty like I'm a terrible person, why am I doing this? Uh, it took up a lot of space. You know, he spends a lot of pages literally just thinking about how terrible he is and how he should be doing things differently. And all of those paragraphs really add up. Um, so this is quite long and it does get a little draggy, which to be fair, so does the original Twilight. Reading it now uh, is much harder than it probably would have been as a tween. And in fact, I think if Twilight had been told from Edward's perspective, I don't think I would have liked it as much as a, as a like tween because I related with Bella and I liked her kind of stable, mature, yet still teenager mindset. A lot of people say that this book is superior to the original Twilight because they in enjoy um, Edward's perspective more and I just kind of don't agree with that. I feel like I do like Bella as a character. She's just very mortal, which is fine. You know, we all are actually. Anyway, I want to get into the kind of pros and cons of this book so I'm gonna start off on a on a good a good beat and we're gonna talk about the really fun additions that this book brought to the Twilight universe so first of all possibly the most important thing that I liked um, was the addition of Bella's character I was thinking about it and I guess it kind of makes more sense that like the person who loves you perceives more about your personality maybe than you do and I feel like Bella, in her own perspective, is kind of bland a lot of the time or just like very single-minded and I got to see like a whole new perspective uh, through 
Edward's eyes and like getting to see her kindness, intuitiveness as far as other people's feelings go and that was just really nice to me. There's also a lot of detail added about her like personality, her dislikes, her likes, her favorite movies, books, like that was all skipped over in the first version of Twilight because like it wasn't as interesting to Bella to list like this is my favorite movie, this is, you know, but to Edward those things were important so they were included and it actually gave me a lot of insight into Bella's character and kind of on that note it was easier for me to understand why Edward became so infatuated with her and even more than that one of the most important additions in this book is getting to see why Alice was so infatuated with her. So in the original Twilight it seems sort of superficial the reason why Alice is interested in Bella, it seems very like, oh, she's a human, so interesting. Um, when in reality, and I didn't think about this, but you know, obviously Alice has fortune telling abilities and way before she even got to officially meet Bella she had already envisioned the friendship she would one day have with Bella and it was sad the way that Stephanie Meyer described her like sitting and like watch like eagerly watching and waiting for the moment when she would finally get to like live out the actual experience of having Bella as a friend. It's just it's just abundantly clear that she loved Bella before Bella ever even knew it and that was like really touching to me. And kind of on the same note, Alice in the original books is obviously very endearing. I love her a lot, but obviously she takes a backseat to the relationship, the romantic side of the book and I didn't care about that as much as like a young tween because instead of reading like the babysitters club I was reading Twilight which is a romance story so female friendships weren't like a huge deal to me but now knowing that Alice was was so much more invested in Bella's life than I thought is really heartwarming to me so I loved that addition of course. Also I just loved getting to see more in depth like the initial meeting of like Alice and Jasper and the Colin clan. You know when they met it was like Edward saw all of this like all these visions that she had and he was like wow like I, now I kind of love you too and it was like this immediate like connection that they had that was really 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 nice and I like I like to see that too because it's hinted at how Alice and Jasper joined the Collins but it's it's kind of brushed over which is fair but in this version you get to see it a little bit more so I like that as well and some other minor things um it was interesting to get to see people's thoughts of course because Edward can read minds Edward's ability to read minds kind of ignited some curiosity in me so for example the fact that Charlie's mind is like a little bit harder to read than the average human and of course Bella's can't be read at all it made me wonder like how this was passed along genetically it's like shield that they have in their minds and getting to see especially like Mike Newton um Jessica like Angela's mind very funny to me and with that mind reading obviously we do meet Jacob in this book it's nice to see Jacob again as like a younger kid who hasn't yet started his transformation and it's nice to see um, how Edward sort of admires him for the clarity and like wholesomeness of his thoughts. Uh, it made me really miss uh, Jacob so that's why you know I, I did want to read New Moon quite a lot and I obviously did I read all the books again. But yeah so that's kind of like my list of like really nice additions that this book brought and thank god that it did have a lot of additions including that like Christmas scene with Carlisle which was really endearing. There's just like a lot of cute additions that aren't necessary like you don't need them to enjoy Twilight but it's nice to have them especially as an older person coming back to the series. But all that being said I do have some negative comments. Just because I'm seeing this from Edward's perspective doesn't make some things less creepy. In fact, some of the things from Edward's perspective are just as creepy as they should be or even more, even creepier. Let's just go to the first occurrence of creep. One of the main like pinnacle moments of Twilight, at least the beginning of the book, is when Edward and Bella share their science class together for the first time and they sit next to each other and Edward discovers that he is very attracted to Bella's scent. You know from Bella's perspective that encounter is just a little bit like off-putting like he's like glaring at her she's not sure why you know it's very weird and you find out later why but 
Um, from Edward's perspective, it is a like full chapter of him literally plotting the deaths of the other children in the classroom. Yes, the word children is, is used not that often, but often enough that it's very uncomfortable for me. And I remember feeling uncomfortable about his use of children uh, for like Bella's classmates in the first version of Twilight. So seeing it again, but more so like in his own thoughts was just very uncomfortable for me because obviously Bella's classmates are the same age as her. So referring to Bella's classmates as children and then dating her is just really strange to me um and of course as he's plotting all of their deaths like how he can eliminate all of them in you know 50 or so seconds he's referring to them as children so it's just it's just very uncomfortable and in line with that like as far as his creepiness goes it's no less creepy when he decides to start entering bella's bedroom without her Say so. I didn't expect to feel as uncomfortable as I did, but I certainly did feel that uncomfortable. It's like Stephanie Meyer tries to like balance it out by, of course, all of those like internal mo monologues of like self hatred and like I shouldn't be doing this, but at the same time, that doesn't really like make up for the fact that he is sitting in her bedroom every night uninvited. It's not strange if you're invited to like, you know, relax and chill. It would be no different than like taking a nap while your friend's sitting there maybe reading a book. But before he's invited, it is extremely weird to me. It's also slightly unnerving that she forgives him for it so quickly. I feel like if a guy, you know, told me, hey, you, I didn't tell you this, but actually I've been sneaking into your room every night. I think I would be like, okay, this changes things. I think we need to to consider this before we move forward. Maybe because it's Edward, I, for I would forgive him, but I don't think it would be that quickly. Like it's instantaneous forgiveness on Bella's part, which is, uh, no kids. And finally, just like a final hurrah of, of negative sort of in this book is that it tears open a sort of question that I have about just the whole plot really. So in Twilight, and especially from Edward's perspective, as he runs to find Bella, who has run away um, to find James and hopefully save her, save her mother, uh, he is accompanied of course by Alice and Jasper and Carlisle um, and Emmett, and they go and save Bella. Bella is bleeding profusely, she's bleeding quite a lot, uh, she's bleeding in the ballet studio and she's bleeding in the car uh, and yet Jasper is Fine, you know you assume okay Jasper must be fine because he's like holding his breath or something Although I still feel like that would be quite a shock to like to like sprint into a ballet studio Get hit by the smell and then continue to like complete your task of killing James uh, and the reason why that's surprising is because obviously the plot of New Moon is that he literally attacks Bella for getting a paper cut um, and then Edward leaves. So it was weird to see the like coolness with which Jasper handled the situation in Twilight and the, the close proximity that he had with Bella the whole time that she was bleeding and like dying. Um, and then comparing that to his like completely bizarre and like very intense reaction to her getting a paper cut in New Moon. I don't know. It was it was it was a little bit weird. But really besides those things, this book really I enjoyed it quite a lot obviously because it made me feel very nostalgic. Nostalgic enough that I literally wanted to finish the entire series even though I have not read the series in a few years and kind of going with that Transitioning from Edward's perspective to Bella's perspective in New Moon and on was was not hard at all. So I feel like actually it's kind of proving the point that they are very similar people. This book did make me hungry for like more female friendship in the original series. So I feel like there's a lot of missed opportunity there. Like Rosalie never really got redeemed because even during the last book she was kind of acting in her own interests or her, in her own beliefs so but like i said at least alice had some more time in the sun uh which i think she really deserved i'm going to put this down because my hand hurts so bad from holding this, this is a really big book Ugh. Ugh. okay to wrap this up, as a 22 year old rereading sort of Twilight from the perspective of a like 104 year old vampire as opposed to a 17 year old girl, um, it is 
cringy, but also, you know, not as bad as you would expect it to be. Maybe that's just because I am pretty open-minded to the concept of Twilight. I don't think it's as bad or as worthy of hatred as some people think it is. I did notice as I was reading that it's harder for me to read Stephanie Meyer's writing than it probably was for me as a teenager. It's not as bad as it could be. Although I will say that, like, I feel like St Stephanie Meyer wrote, and then the monster exalted, like, 60,000 times because he calls his like vampire self the monster. I was so tired of seeing the word exalted. Like maybe it's just something that I kept noticing, but I sure did keep noticing it. Also disappointed that Bella's khaki skirt was never mentioned. I feel like weirdly Bella talks about it a lot, but Edward never made mention of it. <sighs> okay, so anyway, rant slash gush slash review slash whatever the heck this is, is now done. I hope that I'm not missing anything because this felt good to get off my chest. I feel like I've been waiting for this book since literally like 2009, when or even before, because I think I read the books before I had that birthday party. So it's... It's like everything's come full circle. If you have also read Midnight Sun, if you're planning to, or if you're not planning to specifically, drop a comment below and let me know um, either what you thought of it or what you think you'll think of it. Were you a big fan of Twilight when you were younger or were you kind of one of those people that was like immediately off the bat like, no, I'm not gonna read that. It would be fun actually to do a video about books, like the books that I've reread the most throughout my life. If you're interested in that sort of video, then let me know. Uh, the next video that I upload should be a book shopping video, so like a bargain book shopping video, uh, where I hit up a different, a few different places. So hopefully you guys enjoy that as well. If you did enjoy this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you haven't already, please follow me on Goodreads, Twitter, and Instagram. I hope you're having a great week and I will see you back here very, very soon.